Let us pass to the next property of Stirling UV systems. So it is already property number six. And the six property tells us that in the regular Sturm Liouville problem, the eigenvalues have no multiplicities. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Suppose that we have lambda to be an eigenvalue of the regular Sturm Liouville problem. And suppose that we have x1 and x2, which are eigenfunctions corresponding to lambda, but they are such that x1 and x2 are linearly independent. So, in other words, we assume that given an eigenvalue, we can have a number of linearly independent eigenfunctions corresponding to this eigenvalue. Okay, so this means that we assume that L on x1 is negative lambda r on x1 and L on x2 is negative lambda r on x2 and x1 and x2 are independent solutions. So we assume this, and with this assumption, we calculate the following expression, right? So just inserting this, what we have here, we get lambda r x1 x2 minus lambda r x2 x1 which is simply zero so because of this we get that right so we have that this is equal to zero right on the other hand we have proven some time ago then this thing is equal to p x2 x1 prime minus x1 x2 prime prime remember we did it starting our review today that was our second property before we get this right so looking at the left hand side and the right hand side and integrating we get that p times x2 x1 prime minus x1 x2 prime is equal constant so let's call the right hand side of this equation q of x this function q of x must be constant and now let's see what boundary conditions imply. So recall that we assume that our functions x2 and x1, which are eigenfunctions of the Sturm-Liouville equation, satisfy the regular boundary conditions. So we have this and that. And from this, it is very easy to see that the value of this function q at a is equal to zero as well as this function q at b must be equal to zero. So since this function q of x is constant on the entire interval between a and b and is zero at a and b, b and z, so this constant is simply equal to zero. So therefore, our regular boundary conditions imply that this is zero, but P is always positive. So regular boundary conditions imply that this is zero. But X1 and X2 are two solutions 
to an ODE and for such solutions of linear ODEs we have a notion of a Broiskian and it turns out that this expression is precisely the Broiskian of the solutions x1 and x2 and the Broiskian of these two solutions is zero for all x belonging to a and b so therefore these two solutions x1 and x2 of this equation are linearly dependent and this follows from the theory of ODEs so what we have just proven is the following fact all eigenfunctions of a regular sturm liouville problem are simple meaning their eigenvalues have no multiplicities or what is the same have only one dimensional eigenspaces and you will notice that I underline here the word regular because this is not true this statement is not true in the periodic boundary condition case and we know this because we call our example of this equation with the periodic boundary conditions and there we had eigenvalue lambda 0 equals 0 and lambda n which was equal for n squared pi squared l squared where n was running through natural numbers and only the space with the lowest eigenvalue was one dimensional this was just spun by this function square root over 1l but the spaces corresponding to lambda n where n was a natural number were two dimensional spanned by sines and cosines with appropriate coefficients so in the periodic case the lambda n equal 4 n squared pi squared l squared where n was equal 1 2 3 had multiplicity to only the first eigenspace or the lowest eigenvalue has multiplicity 1 but nevertheless in the regular case all eigenspaces are one dimensional so we now pass 2.7 of our survey which deals with the problem of existence of eigenvalues what I mean by this I mean by this the following if you are given sturm liouville equation and some wild boundary conditions it's not even obvious that this constants lambda satisfying the equation and these wild boundary conditions do exist actually it is not obvious because it's not even true consider the simplest case as always we take our favorite simplest sturm liouville ODE which is this one and consider now this ODE on the entire real line where x goes from minus infinity to plus infinity and consider boundary conditions that a function x at infinities turns to zero so impose boundary conditions which are quite natural that limits when x goes to minus infinity of x of x is the same as limit when x goes to plus infinity and is equal to zero so you simply want to have solutions of this sturm liouville ODE with boundary conditions telling you that at infinity your function must vanish and of course it has no solutions because if lambda is positive these functions oscillate at infinity when lambda is zero the function is 
linear in x and also doesn't vanish at infinity. And if lambda is negative, then the solutions are in terms of hyperbolic sines and hyperbolic cosines, which do not vanish at infinity. So this problem does not admit eigenvalues. On the other hand, if we change these boundary conditions into the following one, that now we want that supremum over all x in the real line of the modulus of the value of our function is finite, then it turns out that all lambdas from the infinite interval from zero to plus infinity are eigenvalues of the problem. So in this case, in the case of these boundary conditions, there are no lambdas. And in the case of these boundary conditions, any number from this interval is a good eigenvalue. And we also know that when we, for example, have periodic boundary conditions for this equation, then lambda must be running through a discrete set. So if you are given a sturm liouville equation and boundary conditions, various things can happen. It turns out, however, that in the case of regular boundary conditions, the discrete set of eigenvalues is really the typical one. We have the following theorem. theorem. The proof of this theorem is, for example, in a book of Goldberg and Goldberg. And the title of this book is Basic Operator Theory. Birkhauser in 2001. Okay, so what is the theorem? The theorem says the following. The set of all eigenvalues of a regular sturm uv problem forms an unbounded, strictly monotone sequence. We denote this sequence by lambda n, where n goes from 0 to infinity. And this what this statement says is that there is lambda 0, then there is lambda 1 which is greater than it, and so on. There is lambda n, there is lambda n plus 1, and this sequence is infinite sequence. In particular, there are infinitely many eigenvalues, and because they are unbounded, limit when n goes to infinity, lambda n is infinite. Okay? This statement is also valid in the periodic case, except that the sequence of lambdas is only non-decreasing, because as we know, in this case, eigenvalues can have multiplicities. So therefore, in here, some eigenvalues can be the same, but the sequence is not decreasing. So this is the central theorem of the sturm liouville theory in the case of regular and periodic boundary conditions. It guarantees existence of eigenvalues in discrete sets. Let's draw some corollaries from this theorem. Corollary number one, a regular or periodic sturm liouville system admits an infinite orthonormal sequence of real eigenfunctions. Let's call them xn, where n goes from 0 to infinity, and these eigenfunctions correspond to the eigenvalues. Right? And they are orthonormal with respect to inner product such so that xn with xm are this integral from a to b xn 
x and r dx. Okay, so that's how the orthonormality is defined with respect to this product. And the second corollary is that the sequence of lambda n's is an unbounded subset of a real line which is bounded from below. We have this bound from below because we have the smallest eigenvalue. So these are two immediate corollaries from this what we have in the theorem. And now we'll use it to discuss the last very important property of the Sturm-Logil systems, which is property number eight. This eighth property says something about completeness and about convergence of the Fourier expansion. So here, as in the previous property, I only give you a survey of results without proving them. So we have the following theorem. Again, you can look for the proof in the same book that I quoted in the property number seven. The orthonormal system of all eigenfunctions of a regular or periodic Sturm-Liouville problem is complete in the inner product. What does it mean? To answer this, let us consider the space of functions on the interval a, b, which are piecewise continuous, meaning that the, their discontinuities in the interval a, b can be only such that at the point of discontinuity the left limit and the right limit exists. And this means that this function can only have finite jumps. Now we are ready to explain what the word complete in the theorem means. So what completeness means? The completeness in the inner product like this means the following. Consider xn and 0 to infinity to be a sequence of functions and this sequence of functions is complete with respect to inner product R if and only if for every function f from this space ER of piecewise continuous functions on the interval AB the following holds the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of f inner product with xn squared sum over n is the same as the norm square of our function. Okay, so that's what completeness means. And what the theorem says, the theorem says that the orthonormal system of all eigenfunctions of a regular periodic sturm be problem is complete in the inner product like here. Okay. Now we introduce a definition. The generalized Fourier expansion of a function f with respect to the orthonormal system of all eigenfunctions of a sturm liouville problem is f equal n equal 0 to infinity f of xn r xn it is also called an eigenfunction expansion of f okay so if we have an orthonormal system of all eigenfunctions of a sturm liouville problem, we can form this decomposition of a function, and this decomposition is called eigenfunction expansion of f, or more general, generalized Fourier expansion. 
of, of a function f. Okay. And now the question is if such expansion converges. So the first remark is as follows. If we only assume that f is piecewise continuous, meaning it has only finite jumps on the interval a and b, then the eigenfunction expansion of the function f converges in the mean. Let's write it. What does it mean? It means the following, that the difference between the function and its expansion normally it converges to zero where n goes to infinity. So if we have the sturm liouville problem with the system of all eigenfunctions put into the set of orthonormal system, then we can be sure that the expansion of functions which have the finite norm converges in the mean. The situation can be better if we assume better smoothness of functions f b when f are more smooth than piecewise continuous, stronger convergence results are possible. Actually, we have the following theorem. Let xn from n0 to infinity be an orthonormal system of all eigenfunctions of a regular or periodic sturm liouville problem. The following is true. So, point number one. Let f be a piecewise differentiable function on AB. So now the derivatives of f can only have finite jumps in some points within A and B. Then for all points x sitting inside the interval A and B, the eigenfunction expansion of f with respect to system xn converges to which is the average of the two one-side limits of f at x. Okay? And point two of this theorem is as follows. If we further assume that the function is piecewise differentiable but continuous, we have still something stronger. If S f is a continuous and piecewise differentiable function, which satisfies the boundary conditions of the given sturm liouville problem, then the eigenfunction expansion of f with respect to the system xn converges this time uniformly to f on entire interval a and b. I close this lecture asking to make exercises and this consists 
in understanding examples 631 632 633 and 634 of the course main book